Hello? <laughs> hey, friends, I think I'm live now. Is anybody else out there? Unfortunately, not able to, uh, to be on the AHA Schools page right now. So right now we're presenting poetry on my page. I don't understand quite why it, it's not working to do this as we had planned, but hello. I think I'll probably hang out for a while and um, not, not start teaching too much until we get more people who are, who are on. Oh, I see Dirk, I see Amy. Thanks for coming friends. Thanks for being here. Um, Hi there, Mona Pennypacker. Uh, so let's see, I'll just start talking a little bit about, about poetry and what's happening in this time. And then hopefully as people come on, we'll start reading poems and we'll start talking about ways that you could be writing your own poems. And I'll read a few poems of my own, things that have been up for me um, as I've been continuing my daily practice through this strange time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put some poems into uh, into the comments page here because I'd like you guys to have some access to some of these poems that we're going to be talking about too. So the first poem that I'm going to put in here is one, it's a gorgeous poem called, there it is, it's by Ada Lamon, and it's called Instructions on Not Giving Up. So as you come in, can't hear you, you can only see me. Could other people let me know if they're able to hear me? Could somebody just put in a comment now that says they're able to hear me? Or tell me that you can't hear me? Hi, Erin. Hi, Jennifer. <clears throat> If you're able to hear me, would you please? Oh, good. Jenny says she can hear. So uh, Nina, I think that you may need to figure out on your screen, there should be just a little uh, place where you, it's probably muted and you just need to unmute it. Oh, good. Hi, Frank. Wow. Hi, Amy. So nice to see so many good folks here. Thanks for joining me today. Sorry about the rough start. So, um, Wow, I mean, what what an amazing couple of weeks! And one of the, the the things that I read on a on a Facebook post recently, maybe yesterday, somebody said, "Wow, we must really be in trouble because people are turning to poetry." And uh, yeah, I think unfortunately that's true. I think most people don't generally turn to poetry, but right now seems to be one of those times when when a poem can save us. And today I wanted to share some of the, the poems that have been really helping me to move through it. And then I wanna give you some ideas about some writing that you could be doing also as you're negotiating with, with this. I do wanna honor that if, if you have been trying to write and you've been stuck, then you're not alone. It's very difficult to write in a time when when we can't see beyond what's happening. It's very difficult to write without perspective. And, uh, and if you feel stuck and unable to write, and you, the people, people get stuck and unable to write even in the best of circumstances. So it, this is a great time to be very, very easy on yourself if, if, you're, having, if you're struggling. And as I always like to say, uh, if you are having a hard time writing, the best tip, the best thing I could possibly tell you is lower, your standards. Just let yourself know that anything that you show up with, anything that comes out on the page, that's exactly the right thing to put out on the page. You can always raise your standards again later, but right now you, you don't need to. Right now, just let whatever comes out, come out. Some of the books that I've been reading that have been really helping me right now, this is a gorgeous book called, it's funny, it's backwards, Healing the Divide, Poems of Kindness and Connection. It's edited by James Cruz with a preface by past poet laureate of the United States, Ted Kuzer. This book is saving me right now. And it has so many poems in it about kindness and connection. What could be more important for us to be talking about right now? Uh, if you would like to have a PDF of this book, I would be happy to send one to you. The editor, James Cruz, in an, an act of excessive and extreme and glorious generosity has sent out a PDF so people who can't get the book otherwise 
are able to have access to it. So you can go ahead and private message me. I'd be happy to send you a PDF for the book. Uh, however, if you can afford to buy a book right now and you're able to access it, please, please go ahead and, and support James also. But this is a great book if you're in, in need of a good poetry friend right now. Um, one of my other favorite books of all time, Poetry of Presence, and so many of the poems in this collection have been helping me out. And I thought we'd start by reading one uh, from this book, Poetry of Presence, edited by Ruby Wilson and Phyllis Koldai. And I'll go ahead and put this poem also in the, in the um, notes there on the side so that you can read along with me if you want to. All right. So there, it's called The Good News by Thich Nhat Hanh, and you should be able to read it in the comments section right now if you wanted to read along with me. The Good News. The Good News, they do not print. The Good News, we do print. We have a special edition every moment, and we need you to read it. The good news is you are alive, that the linden tree is still there, standing firm in the harsh winter. The good news is that you have wonderful eyes to touch the blue sky. The good news is that your child is there before you, or your dog, or your cat, <laughs> and your arms are available, hugging as possible. They only print what is wrong. Look at each of our special editions. We always offer the things that are not wrong. We want you to benefit from them and help protect them. The dandelion is there by the sidewalk, smiling its wondrous smile, singing the song of eternity. Listen, you have ears that can hear it. Bow your head, listen to it. Leave behind the world of sorrow, of preoccupation, and get free. The latest good news is that you can do it. The Good News by Thich Nhat Hanh. You know, I, I think, of course, like most of you, I've had a hard time getting off of the news. Uh, it's been, obs I've been obsessively checking out news and it's been very important for me to, to take a step back and, and look at what is news out the window. What is the news here, here in Placerville where I live? And uh, so one idea for writing a poem this is just a list poem, right? And you can do the same kind of poem. You could write basically a good news poem, a poem that's about what is happening that feels good right now. Is it that you have been in touch with friends of yours that you haven't been in touch with? Is it that you're able to spend time with your kids and you haven't been able to see them? Is it that that today the the chives grew in the garden that was pretty exciting for me the other day so what is it that's going right right now and you could write a good news poem just make a list make a list of all the things that are going well um, if you want to, you can check out that poem that I, I've posted there in the comments. I see all of, so many of you writing nice comments. Thank you so much, Lindy, Lindsay and Sarah and Shoshana and David and Heather. It's nice to see you all. Um, yeah, write a, write a poem of good news. What is What is going right right now? And can we focus some on that? Um, the next poem I want to share with you is also from that book. It, the book that I was mentioning earlier is The Poetry of Presence, edited by Phyllis Coldai and Ruby Wilson. And another poem in this collection is called The Thing Is by Ellen Bass. Uh, oh, and here, let me, let me go ahead and put it in there for you also. Just copy and paste it right here into the comments. The Thing Is by Ellen Bass. Ellen Bass, one of my favorite poetry, uh, writers of poetry who's living in America right now. Her poems almost always floor me and I just, mm, I love this one especially uh, and have loved it for a long time and it just feels especially relevant right now. 
The thing is to love life, to love it even when you have no stomach for it and everything you've held dear crumbles like burnt paper in your hands, your throat filled with the silt of it. When grief sits with you, it's tropical heat thickening the air, heavy as water, more fit for gills than lungs. When grief weights you down, like your own flesh, only more of it, an obesity of grief, you think, how can a body withstand this? Then you hold life like a face between your palms a plain face, no charming smile, no violet eyes, and you say, yes, I will take you. I will love you again. Yeah, I made it through without crying. That was close. <laughs> um, this poem, you know, I think about so many people are grieving right now. So many of us are going through an exceptionally difficult time right now, uh, loved ones. Uh, are suffering, loved ones are sick, loved ones are dying. I, I got a note last night from a woman who told me that her mother had died and she wasn't able to go be with her in her last moments because of coronavirus. And there is there is an, a worldwide grief happening right now that we are sharing in. Um, and this line that she says, how can a body withstand this? Um, Sometimes I wonder, and, and how, can a, how can a country, and how can a globe, how can we withstand this? And yet we do, and, and the promise that she gives in this, you know, that we, we show up again to say, I love you to life, that we, we hold it by the face and know that even though life isn't showing up as beautiful as, as maybe we wish it would be, that we still say to life, I love you. Oh. Okay, so I, I did cry. <laughs> Here, cheers. All right. Whew. Well, you know, if you were going to write a poem based on Ellen Bass's poem, um, you know, and I have it there for you in those comments so that you can look it up or you can always find it online very easily looking up The Thing Is by Ellen Bass. Um, I, I ended up actually, I wrote a poem that, that was somewhat like this. Um, why don't I read it to you? Uh, because I was having a hard time yesterday actually falling in love with the world. And, and I thought, okay, here's, here's this invitation. Fall in love with the world, says Ellen Bass. We just go out and, and, and we say to the world, you know, I'll love you again. And sometimes it isn't actually all that easy. So this is a poem that I wrote last night called Patience. Here, I'll go, I wonder if I can, here, I'll put this one into the comments also. Thank you so much for all of your kind comments. I see them all coming right now. Thank you, Janice, for acknowledging that tears are okay. <laughs> Shoshana, you crying too? Okay, thank you for joining me. Um, this poem is called Patience, and it, it, you should see it right now in the in the notes. Patience, again today, the invitation to fall in love with the world, with the gray jay who flits from empty branch to empty branch, with the sharp scent of rabbit brush, with the warm spring wind and the dark buds and the crab apple still tight with future bloom. Some days, though the world offers itself, it's not so easy to fall in love. Days when heartache twists in the chest and turns in us like a screw, leaves us raw and sensitive until, too tender to hear any more bad news, we shudder our hearts. We close our ears. But if we're lucky, an inner voice sends us outside into the day. And though it is gray, the world does what the world does, holds us despite our heartache, holds us the same way it holds the stubby pink cactus all prickly and clenched, holds us the same way it holds last year's thistles all brittle and flat and gray. 
the same way it holds the dank scent of river and the moldering scent of last year's leaves, holds us exactly as we are until we are ready to fall in love again. Patience. Um, yeah, I think that the, this poem, you know, was in direct response to that Ellen Bass poem about it's not so easy right now to fall in love. It can be very difficult right now to fall in love. Unlike that Thich Nhat Hanh good news poem that we just read, uh, there's there's a plethora of bad news right now too. So so an idea for you is to to go ahead and go out into the world and see what are you able to fall in love with right now. Now you don't have to pretend if you are really not in love. Don't don't write it down that you are for heaven's sakes. You know, authenticity is always the key in in writing great poems. Um, and you could write a poem. You know, dear world, today it's hard to fall in love with you. That would be a great starting line. And just write to the world about what it's like to not be able to fall in love with the world today. Um, another poem I wanted to share with you is this one. Oh, by Ada Limon. And uh, I'll go ahead and put it in the notes for you. It's called Instructions on Not Giving Up. All right. And um, Go ahead and read along with me. You might even want to read out loud with me. If you just open it up in the notes there and just read out loud, right along with me. Instructions on not giving up. More than the fuchsia funnels breaking out of the crabapple tree. More than the neighbor's almost obscene display of cherry limbs shoving their cotton candy colored blossoms to the slate sky of spring rains. It's the greening of the trees that really gets to me. When all the shock of white and taffy, the world's baubles and trinkets leave the pavement strewn with the confetti of aftermath, the leaves come, patient, plodding, a green skin growing over whatever winter did to us, a return to the strange idea of continuous living despite the mess of us, the hurt, the empty. Fine then, I'll take it, the tree seems to say, a new slick leaf unfurling like a fist into an open palm. I'll take it all. Wow, I love this poem so much. I love that it's a spring poem right now. Uh, I, we're not anywhere near green leaves around here in Placerville where I am, but I'm imagining that some of you are, are getting some green leaves already. So, and, and we'll be getting them, you know, in the next couple of months here, but this, this whole idea of taking something like patience, which is so important for us right now. I mean, are you like me? I'm just dying for there to be <laughs> some, something to happen maybe a little sooner. Like I know this is only a chapter and part of me just wants this chapter to go faster. Well, that's not going to happen, is it? I mean, this is a really, I feel like we're in a reality TV show all the time right now. I feel like somebody decided, let's make it a reality TV show and, and we're going to put the virus on the planet and we're going to see what people do. Are they going to be kind to each other? Or are they going to amass guns? Or are they going to go out and be more loving? Are they going to figure out finally how to be connected and how we're all one being? The leaves in the same tree? Um, well, so what I think, you know, I think this poem, Instructions on Not Giving Up, what would it look like? This is an idea for you to do your own, own writing right now. What would it look like if you thought right now about what quality you most want to have? Is it, is it resilience? Is it kindness? Is it patience? What is the quality that would most help you move right now forward in the world? And, and write that down. And then you can go out into the world if you're able to. Um, you can also just walk around the house and see if you can find a thing that embodies that quality in some way. 
Uh, this is what I did yesterday. I just thought, I thought I'd, I, I decided I'd try all of these exercises I was giving to you and see if I could do them. Um, and so this is the one that I wrote. I thought what, the quality that I most wanted was resilience. And so I just kind of walked around open to what is resilient right now in the world around me and walked into the garden, which is most, oh, I see some of the things coming in. Shoshana writes, the gratitude is one of the things that she's most wanting and food. Um, <laughs> so what I, when I saw this, when I walked into the garden, it's mostly dead. In fact, it's mostly dirt and, and last year's dead things. But then there's the chives the chives like come, growing anyway, despite the fact we're nowhere near done with winter around here yet. And I thought, oh my goodness, there it is. That is the resilience I need. And I, I wrote a poem letting those chives be my teacher. So um, here's the poem that I wrote based on that. It's a lesson in resilience. Oh, here, let me, let's see if I can find it for you. Uh, maybe. Um, yeah, let's see. I'll find it for you. Oh, yes, there it is. Sorry, friends. Here it comes. Okay, now you can read along with me. A lesson in resilience. Today, it is the chives that spur me, seeing their slender green scapes and leaves that have pushed up through the dried clumps of last year's version of themselves. When nothing else in the garden is green, the chives grow, smooth, bendable, soft, and yet they have managed to pierce through the hard spring dirt, unwatered, ignored. In the aftermath of cold and dark, they come, and something green in me responds, pungent and powerful, eager, ready to flourish, ready to meet the world, though the cold is far from over. What is it in us that longs to grow through the previous dried up versions of ourselves? It rises, yes, like tiny spears, unstoppable, bent on thriving, daring us, to be that resilient, that willing, that green. So Ada Limon was able to go out and let the trees be her teacher for patience. And I was able to go out and let the chives be my teacher for resilience. So I'm just suggesting, what if you, what if you go out in the world right now with that word in mind, if your word is kindness or gratitude or strength or, compassion what if you go out into the world and find something to be your teacher and trust me it will it will the world is there to teach you as mary oliver says the world offers itself to your imagination over and over announcing your place in the family of the things the world is here to teach you and we just need to open up to that all right so the last poem that i have to share with you as a um for workshop is called Yes by William Stafford. And this is where we go into the strange realm of, I thought maybe we'd try and write a poem together on the internet and we'll just see if that works out. All right, I'll cut and paste this one into here for you right now. This is Yes by William Stafford, long one of my favorite poets. And um, he also wrote a poem every day Thanks for the peace and love, Eleanor Swanson. Those are two great things to be focusing on right now. Uh, yes, by William Stafford. Yes, it could happen anytime. Tornado, earthquake, Armageddon, it could happen. Or sunshine, love, salvation. It could, you know. That's why we wake and look out. No guarantees in this life, but some bonuses like morning, like right now, like noon, like evening. 
um, what a simple, beautiful poem it is, and uh, and it really does speak to the uncertainty that we're that we're all dancing with right now, dancing more intimately with uncertainty than ever in many of our lifetimes. And so I thought maybe we'd try and just write, and Julie says, we should sing after this. Great idea. You know I'm a kumbaya girl. Um, so if you would right now, just write into the, um, into the comments section, write some things that are, that you're really struggling with right now, things that feel very difficult. And we're going to see if we can't just create a little poem together. Hmm. Anybody willing to share something that you're struggling with? Lack of toilet paper. It could be that simple, or it could be, you know, something as serious as as losing, uh, losing a relative, losing a friend. Do I know how long Stafford wrote a poem a day? It was many years. Uh, I, I think it was at least twenty. Okay, so good. We have some things coming in. Things that we're struggling with right now include disconnection, no hugs. Be as specific as you can. The sadness, that's very good. What are you sad about? What are you anxious about? Be as specific as you can be. Oh, well, there's some gratitude. Okay, oh, you guys, you're all coming in now. Longing for connection. Unable to go outside for a walk. Can't travel to see my son. Elder friends in lockdown. You guys, this is so good. This is perfect. The skunk smell from yesterday. <laughs> Scent of a skunk stuck on my dog. Wait, willingness to wait for the thaw. Waiting for the thaw. Nurses are overwhelmed. Families losing loved ones. Fragility of life. All right, now uh, not being able to pause in the middle of a handshake. If you would write some things that are going well, things that you are grateful for even now. So like I see a few of these already, children's laughter, the sun is still shining. Thank you for contributing to the poem, everybody. More change. Well, emerging peach blooms. <laughs> that with the chocolate milk. Nice, Anne. <laughs> I know, that was great to talk to you twice this week. We are warriors.
All right. Thank you for all your ideas. I didn't get all of them in here, but we got we got uh, some of them. So I'm going to go ahead and and read this very impromptu poem that we've done together, um, and we'll just see we'll just see how it goes. Oh my goodness, so many things flooding in now. Oh, it's fabulous. I wish I could write them all down. Um, all right, so here it is, just a, a flash of what's happening with us together right now. It could happen, you know, disconnection, no hugs, the sadness, a longing for connection, unable to go outside even for a walk, not able to travel to see my son. My elder friend is in lockdown. There's a scent of skunk stuck on my dog. I'm waiting for the thaw. Nurses are overwhelmed. Families losing their loved ones. Oh, the fragility of life, not even being able to hold another's hand. But the sun is still shining. Children are laughing. We can see birthday parties online. We have time to hear a dad's stories. Peach blooms are emerging. We're saving money on gas. We can walk in the woods. We are love warriors. And the Bougainvillea are shouting life, joy. Nice job, you guys. I wish I could have gotten every single thing in there, but it was fun to put together some of these. Now you can see how easy that process was. And I, part of the reason I wanted to do it together was so that you would get a sense for so many poems, so many great poems are just lists. And in this case, we made a list of things that are really things that we're struggling with right now. Then we used a magic word. Anybody who's taken a workshop with me before knows I like to say the bigger the but, the better. And if you can just use that word but, make a nice big long list of things that are not going so well, and then write but, and now make a list of things that really are going in a way that makes you feel affirmed in being alive, that help you fall in love with the world as it is. Um, I wanted to share a sweet story about something that's been happening, and maybe you've seen this in the news also, that, that the Japanese sent a bunch of medical supplies to the Chinese, and when they did that, they put a Chinese poem on the box. It was a Chinese poem that had been written. It was mis, misrepresented in the news, but they'd sent it with a poem uh, that basically said, we're, we're in this together. And then the Chinese, when they sent medical supplies to the Italians, sent a poem. It, it's been saying in the news that it, that it was um, by Seneca, which is actually not true, uh, but the, it's similar in tone to a lot of things Seneca said, but actually the poem does seem to be from the founder of the Baha'i faith. But imagine this, that, that on the box of medical supplies, they send a poem on the outside of the box that says, we are the waves of the same sea, leaves of the same tree, flowers of the same garden. We are the waves of the same sea, leaves of the same tree, flowers of the same garden. Oh. You know, I think that that is maybe one of the biggest blessings of, of what's happening now is there is, I think, an increased sense of we are in this together and um, that we are intimately connected with each other. So I'm going to close this time. I really appreciate all of you so much for, for joining. Uh, I, I'm gonna, I can't wait to go through and read everybody's notes. Uh, thanks for the note, Eduardo Brummel. Yes, and, and you are welcome. Such a pleasure to do this. It's so much fun. Maybe we'll have to do this more often. Um, thanks to the AHA School for setting this up. I'm sorry again for the, for the strange, who knows why I, it wouldn't work on their page and it would on mine, but I'm, uh, I'm really grateful that you were able to find me and we were able to share this time together. And I'll just read um, two poems then to, uh, these are two that I've written in the last couple of days. This one is called Tonight, I Pray for All the Doctors, the Nurses, the Healthcare Workers. And tonight I think 
of the 17 Italian doctors dead and the hundreds of thousands of people whose test results were positive. And all the doctors, nurses, healthcare workers, some right here in our town. I think of them eating breakfast, reading the same discouraging news as we are, then kissing their loved ones, putting on their shoes, and walking out the door. The resolutions as elusive as last month's peace, the peace we didn't even know we had. Thank you, everybody who is working in healthcare. Thank you, every who weepy again. Oh, thank you. I guess I'll just stop it at that. <laughs> um, and by God, thanks to the grocery store workers, thanks to the people who would have thought that one of the most dangerous, courageous jobs on the planet was going to be grocery store. Clerk, I mean, thank God for them. Um, I'm really grateful to anyone who's putting themselves on the front line right now. Um, and then I'll close with this poem, The Most Important Thing. Oh, here, let's see if I have it. Here's the poem that I just read for the doctors. I should have put it in, I totally forgot. All right, uh, and I'll close with this poem, The Most Important Thing. And uh, <laughs> why are things showing up on my screen right now? That's very frustrating. Um, all right, I'll have to, oh my goodness, <laughs> help. <laughs> Here we go. So to close, the most important thing communicating in the time of coronavirus. And when I get off, I'll, I'll find out a way to post it in the section of comments. The most important thing, just two weeks ago, it was sufficient to say hello, good morning, goodbye. But now in every text, every email, every phone call, I tell my friends and family how much I love them. I tell them life is better because they are in it. I say it with the urgency of a woman who knows she could die, who knows this communication could be our last. I slip bouquets into my voice. I weave love songs into the spaces between words. I infuse every letter, every comma with prayers. Sometimes it makes me cry, not out of fear, but because the love is so strong. How humbling to feel it undiluted, shining like rocks in the desert after a rain, to know love as the most important thing, to remember this as I keep on living. Uh, thank you so much, friends. I really appreciate you joining me. Uh, and uh, let's do it again. This has actually been a lot of fun. Uh, it is a little odd to be not hearing you, but I'm so grateful for all of your all of your comments. And um, I'll post this poem in there. If you do write some poems based on any of the exercises that we've talked about today, please go ahead. This 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 should I believe stay. And uh, I'd love to have you post the poems that you're writing right here in those comments. That would be wonderful. So. If you do have questions about creating ways to create, um, you can send me a note on my website, which is wordwoman.com. I have a page called Words for You, or You the Poet. It's called You the Poet, and there are all kinds of, of exercises that you could try out yourself. And you just, if you didn't catch any of the ones that I had here, so many more that you would be able to, to try out, and they're right there on that page. Oh. Also, last thing, this this book, Saved by a Poem, one of the one of the best books I read yet in terms of how to take a poem that you love and really bring it into you to really know that poem by heart. Um, it's by a woman named Kim Rosen. I highly recommend this book. Uh, once again, if you weren't here at the beginning, the other books that are kind of saving me right now, Poetry of Presence, and this one, 
Healing the Divide, Poems of Kindness and Connection. All right, friends, stay safe. Stay six feet away from each other. Love each other. Find kindness. Read poems. We're going to get through this. Thank you.